So I did want to talk for a minute about the things that I had to do to get this car to go from about 735 horsepower clear up um, without any major changes. So the first, this has this nice radium swirl pot to two Bosch 044 pumps. And I was having some fuel pressure dropping issues. And what we have here, this is, looks pretty complicated, a bunch of squids and octopuses and whatnot, but we have a feed and a return that come from the fuel tank itself. And these are actually, the, the pump in the tank is not a big fancy pump. I think it's just a, it may even be a stock pump, but that's feeding this canister and it keeps this canister full. And then these two pumps are sumped at the bottom of the canister and they siphon and then push. So what the issue that we had was, is I was having pressure drop off, and I know that two O four fours can make over 730 horsepower on ethanol, but when pressure starts to drop, you have to look at the cause. And what I found was the siphons that came out of this radium can were dash six lines. Not only were they dash six lines, you can see one of them here. Um, they had this funny radium fitting that's designed for when they put a pump inside there and I'm not sure if these were supposed to be shipped with this can or if that's just what they do but basically what we were having was the pumps couldn't siphon fast enough out of the can in order to push the fuel forward so that was one of the siphons and here was the other so what I had to do was replace them with dash eight siphons so now we have dash eight siphons and I had to use kind of a I had to modify a fitting that goes from dash eight to dash six ORB, which is this side here. And then the fittings I had didn't have this hose barb on them. You can see how small that, that hole is there that we were trying to siphon through. So now we're full dash eight straight through, which is closer to half inch feed. The only downside was this pump was too close to here. So I couldn't go right over like the old one that came from it. So I actually had to go around and back. So that's still not quite as ideal as I'd like, but it's getting fuel pressure now, so clearly the problem is solved. So here you can see the fuel pressure on the middle graph here. Um, I've got a little bit more boost in it right now, so there is a little bit more pressure overall. But you can see it came up and it still drops just a little bit here. We're dropping about eight pounds and boost is dropping about two. So we have about a six pound differential loss up top. Um, but before we had more like a 15 pound differential loss up top and not only did we have a 15 pound differential loss up top, but our actual air fuel ratio was going crazy. Oops, let me fix this real quick. So our air fuel ratio was leaning out really bad up top before as well when pressure dropped. Now, as pressure drops just a little bit, we're not leaning out. And I'm gonna show you how that happened. So what we did was we installed in here, this is the Cobb fuel pressure compensation kit. And what this does is it's measuring the fuel pressure as it comes into the regulator. So it's the last point in the system before it gets returned back to the tank. And if pressure starts to drop, what it does is it actually compensates by scaling the injectors to what would be considered a smaller size injector. So they need to be open longer. And because these are 2200 CC injectors, they have the headroom to scale like that at this power level. So even though we are still losing a little bit of fuel pressure, our injectors are compensating, so our air fuel ratio is super flat and smooth, and, and it just it's working really, really good. So when we go to the log, we can see the fuel pressure compensation working. Um, we actually did hit 105% uh, injector duty cycle, and you can see right about here, we went from you know mid mid 80s, and then it rapidly increased as we end up with. Let me get up here to the fuel pressure compensation here. So fuel injector scale, so fuel pressure differential, you can see here it goes, we're at a differential of 41 and a half, we're 44.3 in the middle, we're targeting about 43 pounds. And then you can see the differential drop, and what that is is that's the boost pressure minus the fuel pressure. And so you can see here our, our fuel pressure peaks at 87.9, which again is kind of where these pumps don't like to flow, and then it just tanks down to 76 so we are dropping I guess closer to 10 pounds across the pole um, and you can see the fuel injector scale goes here it you know pretty small scale um, and then we have to uh, in in cob tuning when you scale to a to a larger number here it just means that it takes more fuel the injector has to be open longer so you can see the injector scale just has to ramp up um, as we get up to redline 
So we could still do a little bit of work on the fuel system on this to try to make that a little smoother and that would give us a little more headroom for even a little bit more boost potentially. Um, we could lower the ethanol content which would reduce our demand but I don't think we want to do that. Um, I like the ethanol where it's at. So now you can see no knock and I am using knock sensors. This is a street car so knock sensors are active. Um, engine speed on that pole 7800 RPMs. Dynamic advance is good. Everything's looking good. Coolant temps, nice and cool. Um, calculated loads up there. So calculated load usually follows torque pretty close. So the next thing that we had was, let's come back over here to the graph. So you can see my boost was peaking before at 41 pounds and then dropping off to red line to 35.29 pounds. So we wanted a lot more boost than that up top. Now we're making 43.3 up top you know, instead of 35. So we're making seven, eight pounds more boost. So how did we get eight pounds more boost out of it? Well, what I did, and this isn't a final install, I just kind of zip tied it in here just to get it going. But I have now a four port electronic boost control solenoid, which when you run a four port, it allows you to have full bleed control to the top and bottom of the wastegate. And there's the wastegate down there. It's just a tile MVR a single tile MVR and it's actually recirculated into the exhaust so that's why this car is so quiet at wide open throttle. Before we had, and nothing against this product, it's great, we had the Grim Speed 3 port and when you have one of these you can only really effectively run about two to two and a half times your wastegate default pressure and we were actually well over that. We were closer to three times the wastegate default pressure because we were using a top and bottom bleed style but it still just isn't enough. With a four port you can run I mean, in some cases, you can run five, six, seven times your wastegate spring pressure, basically until just the, the exhaust housing back pressures out. So it's, it gives you quite a bit more headroom. The downside is it is quite a bit more difficult to control and to get a good smooth boost curve. But as you can see from our graph, as I walk back over here, boost is pretty darn flat. We peak 44.49 and we taper off to 43.27 up top. And we're doing quite a bit of a, uh, compensation with the boost control. I mean, I'm having to ramp in a lot of duty cycle to get down low from 44 to, you know, 43 and a half up top, but that's what you got to do to get the boost in. And when you get the boost in, they make the power. A couple other things I wanted to talk about on here. Um, like I said, we have a full radium fuel system. We got radium regulator, radium rails, uh, red horse performance fuel lines, um, this nice custom breather setup that actually doubles as the coolant overflow tank. So you have a heated can setup, which helps remove condensation from the system. Um, it still has a street PCV vacuum breather in there. So there's a check valve and that allows vacuum to be drawn on the can when you're driving on the street, which is good for emissions and everything else. Um, on the turbo, we do have an intake for the car. I took it off just for the dyno because I was trying to get every last pound out of it. Um, it didn't seem to make much of a difference with it on or off. So it is breathing correctly, um, but the turbo is a precision 6266 Gen 2. So it's a seven blade, uh, but it is a very small turbo for, for this car. Uh, to combat some of the smoking issues people talk about on the precision turbos, especially when they're mounted at kind of an angle, this turbo is mounted, it's not flat, it's a little bit angled back as you can see. Um, we have this TurboSmart OPR40, and I'm telling you right now, people I've seen uh, say that these don't really work well, Every one of these cars we've put it on with a precision turbo has not had any kind of a smoking issue. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, Radium has these nice 90 degree banjos that allow the feed to come in at a 90 degree angle, um, which is really helpful on these Subarus because the turbo sits so low. Um, really makes it easier to get the fuel rails and everything you need. And then you can see we've just got way too much stuff going through on this car. Um, oh geez, what else? Boomba throttle body, so big throttle body. Um, like I said before, it's a PRE Racing Pro Drag motor, which is not a closed deck engine, contrary to what everyone would, you know, tell you you need. Um, we make well over 1,200 horsepower on these open or semi-open deck motors. Um, they're sleeved with a custom step deck. The heads are O-ringed. Um, we don't use a fire lock on the block itself. We just use an O-ring on the head and a stepped sleeve. And that gives us all of the sealing power that we need. Um, we use half-inch studs not the 14 millimeters that some other people use. So we've never actually had a head gasket failure and I'm not even gonna knock on wood, like it's not even necessary. Um, this system has been proven to seal at as much boost as we can get one of these cars to make. 
So when we find the limit, we'll let you know, but so far we have more of a limit with the connecting rods turning into question marks than we do head gaskets getting blown out. So that's all I have for you on this car today. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, 809 horsepower street car is nothing to scoff at, especially one that's got just a lot of really nice parts, looks really good. It's got this sweet um, drop vent carbon fiber hood. Uh, I'm not sure, is it a Caminari? It might be. I'm not sure who makes this one. Um, I know his old car had a Caminari, but anyway, it's a really beautiful car. Uh, we custom built a battery box so you can't even see the battery inside there uh, a lot of cool stuff a lot of custom fab on this car custom powder coat everywhere and at the end of the day it all added up to a really well balanced well performing street machine so again thanks for watching and subscribe if you like the video and want to see more